everyone, and welcome to the Tech Unveiled. So this is our new series where we let our experts at Ericsson share their unique views and insights on current and upcoming technologies. And I'm Stian Axelsson, and I'll be your host today. So the topic of the day is Cloud RAN, and to help us navigate through all this, we've invited two special guests. Firstly, let me introduce to you uh, Gabriel Foglander, Strategic Product Manager for Cloud RAN. So welcome, Gabriel. Thank you, Stan. Great to be here. It's so nice to have you with us in the room. It's kind of rare these days. So also, our next special guest is Eric Parsons, who is uh, globally heading the R&D for, for Cloud RAN at Ericsson. So welcome to the show, Eric. Yeah, thank you, Stan and Gabriel. Very glad to welcome you here virtually at our R&D facilities. Now, I know we all miss our in-person meetings and our travel, but this is a great way to connect with our customers, our partners, and our colleagues through a digital platform. It's wonderful to have you with us, Eric. So, okay, let's dive into why we're here today. Cloud RAN. Uh, Gabriel, can you give us a brief introduction? What is Cloud RAN, say, compared to traditional RAN? Sure, Stan, absolutely. Cloud RAN entails to migrate, to migrate away from custom-built network nodes that we've used to have in, in previous network generations towards uh, virtualized software that is deployed on commercial off-the-shelf hardware. So in a way, we are disaggregating the hardware and the software uh, instead of having them coupled in a system. You can break it down uh, in Cloud Run in, in many different ways, but in Ericsson, we choose to, to do it in four main components. And that entails the COTS hardware, including the accelerators, uh, the cloud native architecture, the network uh, management and orchestration, as well as RAN programmability. The RAN programmability, okay. And that makes it pretty clear, the four building blocks, basically. Uh, and can we go and be a bit more granular? Uh, what is being virtualized? What we discuss here is the centralized unit and the distributed unit, if we talk RAN specific architecture. And that is what used to be deployed as a, a baseband. And those are the functions that will be um, virtualized or migrating to Cloud RAN architecture in the first wave here. So why now? What's happening to uh, drive the market right now? These are exciting times. I mean, there are a lot of things that converge to make this uh, a more realistic possibility, I think. Uh, so first of all is communication service providers. They have uh, deployed the, the core in a virtualized manner a few years back. I think also we see evolution in the cloud infrastructure technology itself, going from virtual machines into containerized deployments like Kubernetes on, on, on uh, bare metal. The second thing is, the industry as a whole uh, and uh, communication service providers as well are looking into revenue potential at the edge. So many service providers also have designs to capture that market. And in, in this question, it comes up, to what extent can we share the network infrastructure and deploy the cloud run software at, on the same network infrastructure that may be the apps that we host uh, to, to drive the edge business cases? Thirdly, Another driver is that we have a standardization now for packetized front hall, and, and that makes uh, it attractive to do more centralized deployments in data centers because it consumes less fiber bandwidth. So that is also another enabler. And I think the fourth one is actually that the COTS hardware and the accelerators themselves are becoming more capable to deal with the 5G use case, which is a high performance uh, compute use case. So if I turn to you, Eric, uh, how do you describe our four building blocks uh, in more detail? Yes, of course, Stan. So typically, our radio access networks is driven by a purpose-built baseband unit, which is running dedicated software that powers an antenna that ultimately connects to your cell phones. Now, when we're talking about a virtualized RAN, we're talking about taking the software that runs here and running it on off-the-shelf hardware. With virtual RAN, we can adopt concepts that are being developed in the Open RAN forum. Two of these concepts are the network automation and the RAN intelligent controllers. Networks are very expensive to manage, and so the ability to introduce network automation can greatly reduce the operational expenses that are incurred by the operators. In addition, as we're looking at 5G use cases, we're seeing the need to be able to extend and tailor the RAN functionality through open interfaces that allow operators to develop applications that tailor the way that the network works for 5G use cases. And Eric, uh, if we uh, come back to the four billing blocks, uh, can you tell us even more about that virtualized hardware? 
Yeah, so the servers that we use are x86 servers that are typically found in data centers, as you can see right here. Now, these servers are also running cloud infrastructure software and container services that, upon which we put the RAN software. These soft servers have quite a bit of compute power, but for some capabilities of the RAN, it's not sufficient. We must introduce accelerator technology, as illustrated on the bottom shelf here, in order to drive the lower layer functions that are associated with driving these antennas. These accelerators run functions such as rate matching, LDPC, and CRC. The central unit is much more latency tolerant and can be deployed in different geographic locations in a much more flexible fashion. We have two types of accelerators that we've, we've been working with. One of them is an inline accelerator, as we can see with graphical processor units, such as those by NVIDIA, or look-aside accelerators that are purpose-built for 5G networks, such as the one that's being developed by Intel's FlexRAN. OK. And, uh Coming back to the second building block then, uh, uh, the cloud native architectures. Uh, how are we addressing those at Ericsson? It is not sufficient to simply port the software from the purpose-built baseband to the off-the-shelf systems and get the full benefits. What we must do is refactor the software according to cloud native concepts using microservices. This is what ultimately gives us the ability to deploy services in a much more flexible manner, allows us to expand the number of servers upon which this is running or shrink depending on the traffic that's in the network, and to update the software incrementally over time. One of the elements of upgrading the system is what we call continuous deployment. And so instead of deploying or delivering software on a big monolithic release by release, we can incrementally s deploy software updates to the microservices using continuous deployment. All right, Eric. And uh, then the, the kind of the third piece of the puzzle, uh, the network management and orchestration. How, uh, how do we work with that at Ericsson? Typically, we manage our purpose-built systems using dedicated network management functionality. What the Open RAN forum has done is introduce a new layer, a system management and orchestration layer. That system management and orchestration layer does everything that our network management functions does. So that includes fault management, performance management, configuration, security. But on top of that, adds the capabilities for orchestrating these microservices and managing the lifecycle of those services. It includes the interfaces to support network automation and RAN intelligence that I spoke about before. Thanks, Eric. OK, so coming back to you then, Gabriel. We've got the fourth and the final uh, building block, uh, and that is the RAN programmability. So making the RAN programmable. Uh, can you shed some more light on what that means? Well, as, as Eric mentioned, one component of this is, is the microservices itself that will increase the agility. But he also mentioned the, the RAN intelligent controller. And that, that will bring you know, the capability to do this in the network. So we have two flavors of uh, RAN intelligent controllers. One is called the, the non-real-time RIC, uh, and the other one is called the near-real-time RIC. And the thing that distinguishes these two is the placement in the RAN and how frequently they interact with, with the RAN uh, system. So the, the non-real-time RIC interacts with RAN on a second time frame, and it's placed in the management system, which, which means that it has access to information from other domains, such as the core network, the transport network, the edge, or even other external information sources. And from that, it can then uh, apl be applied in, in the applications that provide policy down into the centralized unit. Uh, the new real-time RIC, it integrates with the RAN in a, in a millisecond time frame, so it, it resides within the central unit through a new interface. And this one is then based on the information that is within uh, the RAN domain itself, optimizing on that. So I think we're, we're quite positive about the, the opportunity uh, that you can bring from having external information opening up for innovation potential and thus making the RAN more programmable and agile in the future. All right, Gabriel, as we begin to wrap up here, 
Um, so what would you say uh, is making us unique? You know, why partner with Ericsson for Cloud RAN? Yeah, we are extremely proud at Ericsson to be able to do this. And I mean, we have a lot of experience running the most advanced networks in the world. We know all about what it takes in terms of performance to meet our customers' demands and the, and the end user as well. We bring a vast array of expertise and capabilities to the table. We have a, a world-leading radio portfolio. We have transport solutions. We have the core. We have management system that brings it all together. And so what we're looking to do is build this into the Cloud Run portfolio and make sure that it integrates seamlessly with traditional uh, ERS deployments and installed based. On top of that, we also have extensive uh, collaboration with the device ecosystem, uh, which is needed to create the kind of interoperability and the performance that you as a user expect. So I think we're very well positioned to bring a leading portfolio to the market in this area. So when do you think we're going to have a proof of concept to show the world? Yes, and as you can imagine, we, we've been working on this for quite some time, uh, moving through the different phases of technology exploration uh, to the fact that we have it running in our labs at the moment. In fact, what we'd like to do is to invite the audience to the Ericsson Cloud Run page and make sure that they have a chance to check out the blogs and also the demo that we have recorded there that shows a fully virtualized stack running VCU and VDU, which is interesting. Awesome. There's, there's plenty more to see there on the web. For sure. So with that, I'd like to thank you both, uh, Gabriel, for being with us here in the room, and also Eric over there in Ottawa. Thanks to both of you for joining, and thanks to you, the viewers, for uh, watching the, the very first episode of our Tech Unveiled. Um, since there is plenty more to discover within Cloud RAN, uh, there are more episodes in the pipeline. So we're going to have one special on mid-band 5G, and we're going to have another one on the network management, where we we'll dive in more on that. So. Don't miss out on that. Stay tuned. Uh, take care and bye-bye. <laughs>